Cicada is the newest addition to CW's Arrowverse, a villain who in the comics first appeared in the Flash Volume 2 issue 170 back in 2001. His debut saw one of his followers, a member of the Cicada cult, killing a character named Julie Jackman, stabbing her in her apartment and leaving her for dead as her infant son cried. But in the CW show, he's a character who's quite different, and has been shrouded in mystery in the show for quite some time now. So today we're diving deeper into who Cicada is with our list of the top 10 Cicada shocking facts. Also stick around till the end of the video cause we'll be reading off comments from a previous one. All right, let's get to it. And at number 10, Origin. Let's take a look at Cicada's origins in the comics. Cicada, aka David Hirsch, was born in 1890 and was both an architect and a preacher. His latter profession saw him employed at St. John's Catholic Church. Despite being a man of God, he was known to be quite violent and paranoid, and would often have outbursts that would result in him physically abusing his wife Elizabeth. He eventually went too far and murdered her, but grew sick with regret and tried to commit suicide. That was when he was struck by lightning and gained his abilities. And at number 9, his CW Flash origin. In the show, Cicada, who is notably younger than his comic book counterpart, has the ability to steal metahuman's powers via his lightning bolt shaped dagger. He's fairly new in the villain game and sought out Barry and his team simply because they were metahumans that he could hunt. Barry in the show does end up hunting down a suspect by the name of David Hirsch, but he does not match up with the villain and doesn't have lightning bolt daggers. As they discover, this profile done by Sherlock was just a copy of the same case from a different Earth. This Earth's Cicada isn't David like he is on other Earths, but rather his name is Orlin, who doesn't exist in the comics. This Orlin character has a niece named Grace who got caught in an accident when a satellite exploded above him. He ended up with a shard of debris in his chest and Grace was hospitalized, with the doctor advising that she may never wake up. It's also implied this satellite accident was caused by an evil metahuman, and the Flash and his team destroyed that satellite to save the world, hence Cicada's quest for vengeance against metahumans. Now this debris in his chest would later become his lightning bolt dagger. And at number 8, his powers. Cicada's powers are thanks to his unique physiology. In the comics, after he was struck by lightning, he essentially turned into a lightning rod for energy. He could collect souls and their energy and live forever by stealing people's lives, sacrificing them to solidify his own immortality. Stealing one life allows him to live up to a century or more. So considering that he's killed many an individual, he's got enough energy to live for a while. This also means that he has an accelerated healing ability thanks to his increased metabolism. He can heal damaged tissue much faster than the average human. In addition to this, he's known for his charisma and leadership abilities, having convinced a whole lot of people to join his cult. More on that later though. Moving on to number 7, his lightning daggers. One aspect of the character that is translated into the CW Arrowverse is that Cicada uses lightning bolt shaped daggers. Now in the comics he has two of them. They're capable of absorbing his victim's life force and energy, which he then uses to either keep himself immortal or to resurrect the dead. But more on that resurrection shtick in a bit. And at 6, his Wally obsession. Cicada was convinced that the way he got his powers was exactly the same way that the Flash, Wally West, had gotten his. So much so that he made it his goal to murder every single individual that the Flash had ever saved, which included Julie Jackman, the tragic character we mentioned in our intro. Cicada teams up with Wally's ex, Magenta, and kidnaps him. This is when he spins a whole tragic tale to the Scarlet Speedster, claiming that his wife was murdered, not by him. He also tells Wally about the accident that gave him powers and how he has visions. Moving on to number 5, The Cult. Cicada has his own cult narcissistically named the Children of Cicada. These were the followers that were dedicated to murdering people for their energy. He taught these followers that the secret to immortality was gained by sacrificing the lives of others. Now, in exchange for their devotion, he promised them everlasting life. In addition to that, he painted this picture of Wally to the cult that depicted him as their savior, the one who was key via his energy. Cicada would later reveal to his followers that they were destined to die for the cult, with Cicada resurrecting them afterwards. The cult would ultimately be defeated after the Flash, alongside Keystone Police, stopped them. And at number 4, The Secret Society of Supervillains. Cicada's career villainy goes on beyond the Flash. During the iconic Crisis on Infinite Earths event, Cicada is broken out of jail during Gorilla Grodd's jailbreak out of the facility, shortly after his first appearance in 2001. Now, Briefly afterwards, he attends the funeral of Captain Boomerang and is invited by Alexander Luther Jr. to join his secret society of supervillains. He accepts. Cicada joins a list of ton of other DC villains who have joined the group over the years. 
There's a lot of them. And at number three, his dead wife. After his wife Elizabeth's death, Cicada put her body in a sealed metal coffin and hid it beneath the foundation of Keystone Motors. Creepy, right? Well, it gets worse. Early on, after getting his powers, Cicada started to have visions. In one of these visions, he saw his wife being resurrected by him, along with him becoming immortal. This is what prompted him to go after the Flash specifically. He believed by taking the leftover energy from all of the individuals the Flash had saved by murdering them, and by stealing energy from the Flash himself, he would have enough energy to bring his wife Elizabeth back from the dead. It's also worth noting that Cicada had seemed to have forgotten that he murdered his wife. Kind of a big thing to forget that he did. After he managed to resurrect her, she reminded him of this very important fact. This pushed him over the edge and he lost it, killing her yet again, all by absorbing her energy through a kiss. And at number two, Grant's powers. Cicada can also give powers to non meta humans. So, for context, when he was defeated by the Flash alongside Keystone City detective Jared Morillo and Officer Fred Shire, he didn't go down without a fight. He slashed Morillo with his knife. This attack ended up giving Morillo powers of his own the ability to rapidly heal from any injury, which was similar to Cicada's own accelerated healing ability. After his arrest, he would be sent to death row at Iron Heights. Morillo, who visited Iron Heights on one occasion, felt a strange and strong connection to the villain when he walked by his cell, a psychic link of sorts. After the defeat of Cicada, Morillo would go on to be a part of the new Department of Metahuman Hostility. And at number one, Cygnus 4019. In 2008 Salvation Run issue one, Cygnus 4019 was introduced, a penal colony also known as Planet Salvation, in which criminals are sent there for long term detention. Initially, it was used by the new gods of Apocalypse as a training planet and contains various deadly creatures and tech. It became a criminal facility under the control of Amanda Waller, of course, and Checkmate, in which villainous metahumans were sent there under the condition of behave or die. Many a Flash villain has been sent there, including Cicada. All right, there we have it, friends. What do you think of Cicada? Do you prefer the version of him in the comics or the one that's appeared in the CW Flash show? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know your thoughts. Speaking of comments, here's a few from our top 10 cannibal Batman villains list. From Orange Pelt, top 10 nerd, would you rather have a cheese and ham sandwich or a ham and cheese sandwich? Please answer this and have a great day slash night. Ham and cheese, assuming that there would be a higher ratio of ham to cheese. From T Rex Advent, can you do a top 10 actors who could play? Adam Warlock in the MCU. Ooh, that's a good one. I'll let our producers know. Who do you guys think would make a good Adam Warlock? Alex Pettifer would be my choice. He's got a good look for the hero. From Broken Bridge, please make one top 10 Power Girl facts video. We are, it's actually in the works. It'll be coming your way in the near future. And last but not least, from Kevin Johnson, don't eat humans? What am I going to do with all the barbecue sauce that I bought for after the video? Oh man, I'm sorry to ruin your dinner plans. I hear barbecue sauce is great on ribs though, not Human ribs, though. I, I mean, just try to try to avoid the human ribs or anything human. All right, that's it for now, folks. If you're new here to Top Ten Nerd, why not hang out with us some more and subscribe? We'd love it if you stuck around. We also have a great little playlist currently flashing on your screen, so why not give it a click? In the meantime, though, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.